amazing artist. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to week three of our monochromatic self-portraits. Mono means one, chromatic means color. So for this project, we're using just one color. And on the first day, we chose that color because we made it in our background. I chose pink for my one color. So today when I color my self-portrait, I'm going to use pink. So if you chose red for your background, you're only going to use red today. If you chose green, you're only gonna use green. So the first week of this project was pretty important because it's going to be that one color that we use for the rest of this project. And last week we learned all about Vanessa Brantley Newton and we looked at some of her poetry in her book, Just Like Me. We celebrated ourselves by creating a beautiful self-portrait. Now today we are going to color that self-portrait and I'm going to do the infamous marker painting technique but feel free to use crayons or colored pencils, anything that you have at home, as long as you're using just your one color that you've chosen. Oh, like I said, for me, my color is pink. That's the color I'm gonna focus on for this project. And so I have one dark pink and I have one light pink. If you just have the darker version of your color, then just use that today. If you just have the lighter version, then just use that. If you have both, then that's great. Since I'm going to turn these markers into paint on my paper, I also have a little cup of water and a paintbrush. But you don't actually need a paintbrush for this technique. You can use your finger in place of your paintbrush. So instead of painting water with a paintbrush, you can just dip your finger into the paint and gently rub it across your marker wherever you colored and it will turn into beautiful paint. And since I am going to be using water, I of course have a messy mat under my work so I don't get any mess on my table. So I'm gonna start with my darker pink. If you have a dark and a light of your color, then you will wanna start with your darker. If you just have one color today, then just start with that one color. But what I'm going to do is I am going to outline the inside of most of these shapes that I drew last time. And I'm just going inside of that shape and uh, drawing one line. And I am using the side of my marker, so it's a little bit of a thicker line. If you use the tip of your marker, it's much thinner. So I recommend using the side of your marker to get that thick line. Um, that's a lot easier to cover this space. Okay, so I'm just trying to make it even. It does not have to be perfect. And I'm actually gonna go over my eyes too. My eyes are closed. So I'm just gonna do lines over top of those and my nose. And uh, since my mouth is pretty small, I'll switch back to the tip of my marker so that I can get a skinnier line. If you have any smaller shapes on your face, then you'll wanna use the tip of your marker as well. But if you have bigger areas, like our head is a much bigger area than our mouth, we can use the side of our um, marker. I'm also going to do my hair all the way around the inside edge. If you have any details, like small details like earrings, like on mine, then you'll wanna be extra careful around those details inside of my ears. Wherever we put marker right now, once we paint on it, it's going to be the darker areas of our portrait. So this artwork is going to have some shadows, some midtones, and some highlights. Don't forget to go inside of your neck. And I'm doing this first because after I outline all of these shapes, and I can just go ahead and paint this water on top, and you will see what will happen. even on your shoulders here. Anywhere pretty much where you have a shape, you're going to put a line of marker. And I'm gonna do it over top of my stripes on my shirt as well. So don't forget if you have any shapes on your shirt, then you'll wanna go um, take your marker on the inside of your shape and just outline the inside of it. Okay. I'm gonna also do the texture lines that I made last time on my hair because I want those to be a little bit darker. And the top of my head, can't forget that. So I have everything outlined. I'm gonna um, just hold off on this stuff up here. I'm just focused on my portrait right now, my face, my hair, and my outfit. 
Once you've outlined everything in your darker color, if you have that, you can now take your lighter color and go along the inside edge again. So I'm putting it right next to where I put that dark pink and I'm just gonna outline everything one more time. Remember in the smaller areas, you can use the tip of your marker to get in any small shapes. outlining once more with my lighter marker. Oops, it looks like I forgot the inside of my ears. That's a smaller shape so I can use the top of my marker. There we go. And now I can take my paintbrush and you do the same if you are doing the same technique as me. And I'm gonna take some water on my paintbrush and some of these shapes are very small so we really don't need a lot of water to fill them in. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run my paintbrush along the marker okay you see how I'm just putting that paintbrush right on top of that marker and it should start to bleed and turn into paint and fill in the rest of your face but I'm focusing my attention at first only on the marker where we colored it in where we drew that line and I'm going over it with water remembering to take care of my beautiful ballerina paintbrush even if you're at home you should always take care of your paintbrush you should pretend that your paintbrush is like a beautiful ballerina dancing across your paper just like a ballerina would dance on a stage they always dance on their tippy toes so we want to make sure that we keep the hairs or the ballerina toes nice and straight. If you squish it down, then you're breaking her little tippy toes, and we don't want that. So let me go ahead and add some water to my mouth. This is a smaller area, so I'm just filling it in very gently, not squishing my paintbrush. I'm gonna clean my paintbrush now. I've gone over all the marker on my face, and I wanna fill the rest of my face with just water. No more marker because we want this part to be the lightest part of our face. I'm cleaning my paintbrush every now and again and just grabbing more water, trying to fill in all of that white space. And as you can see, where we put the marker, it's a lot darker. So those are like all of our shadows on our portrait. Let me go ahead and do my hair as well. We're gonna fill in all of these spots. I'm just gonna grab water and paint it on top of my marker and then fill in all of that white space. And it is totally fine if you go outside of the lines a little bit because we will be cutting these out later. Do you see these puddles forming on my paper? That is a good sign. If you don't have puddles on your paper, then that means your painting is very dry. You need to add a little bit more water, okay? These puddles are perfectly fine and it's actually gonna make your self-portrait look really, really cool. All right, going around the inside of my neck now. And then I'm gonna do my hair on the other side. Feel free to leave certain parts of your portrait white though. Like if you wear glasses or something, you can leave those white if you want to. I think I'm gonna leave my earrings white so that they stand out a little bit and don't get lost because that's kind of a smaller detail. And I'm afraid if I paint on top of it, then we're not really gonna be able to see it that well afterwards once it dries. So feel free to leave any areas, like small details like glasses or jewelry, if you have that on, um, leave those white if you want to. I think I'll leave my earrings white and uh, mm, maybe my collar too. Let's see what it looks like when I paint water onto the rest of my outfit and then I'll decide if I want to continue painting onto my collar or not. And yeah, I think I'm gonna leave my collar white too. So like I said, you don't have to add color to every single inch of this portrait. You can have some white parts if you would like to. 
And I'm just finishing up on the top of my head up here. Trying to blend those colors with my water. Blend them out. If you have some darker areas that you don't want to be dark, then you can just dry your paintbrush off a little bit on a paper towel or your messy mat. And you can actually pick it up with your paintbrush. So I'm just drying my paintbrush off, picking it up and wiping it onto my messy mat because I don't want my chin to be that dark. So I'm just trying to pick that part up to make it a little bit lighter. Okay, I've just finished adding all the color that I want to to my portrait. I have left some details white because I want them to stand out a little bit more. You can leave anything that you would like to white as long as most of your portrait is covered in your one color. We are actually going to leave this part of our portrait up here. All of these amazing things about ourselves. We're going to leave it until next week. So just focus your attention on coloring your portrait today. Just your face, your hair, and your outfit. And leave all these things white still because we're going to do something different to these next week. I hope you guys have a lot of fun adding your one color to your beautiful monochromatic self-portraits. I can't wait to see how they're turning out. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.